Well, hello there, Capricorn. How are you? It is so good to see you again. I'm Mary Sue, and I'm so grateful that you're here. So today we are going to be doing your February 2024 general tarot reading. So we'll take a look first at the overall energy with the Oracle cards, and then we'll move to the tarot for more details about any obstacles on your path or any areas of resistance. Um, and if you're enjoying the content that I create, I'd really appreciate it if you would consider liking, commenting, or subscribing. I really do appreciate all of your support. Okay, let's get into it. Let's see what's on the horizon for you here in February. Okay, you have staying focused, hold the course, and dolphin spirit, this and that are true. Okay, so all right, with this energy, <laughs> Capricorn, there's a situation that's coming up in February, okay? Um, it's understanding that the way that you are perceiving a situation in your life, okay, is your truth. Your truth is the way that you are perceiving the situation. There's somebody else in your life that perceives the situation in a completely different way, okay? A lot of times this might be happening with a family member. It could be happening with a boss or a coworker, somebody that you're, you're kind of like maybe in daily contact with or, you know, is pretty prominent in your life and you're at odds about something, okay? Sometimes this can show up in a relationship when you're feeling like you're disconnecting from someone because the way that you have um, spiritually awakened, right, you see the world in a different way than you used to. But the truth of the matter is, is that at one time the two of you saw the world in the same way you have just awakened <laughs> to a higher level so you see the world in a different way but sometimes we try to convince the other person that hasn't quite awakened right that our new way <laughs> is the way for them to also see it um, and that just we it, it's just understanding that the way that they are perceiving the world is true for them that is their truth we can't change anyone's truth right um, and the way that you see the world, that is your truth. So here's the message with staying focused. It's staying focused on what it is that you want out of life instead of kind of like worrying about this other person. Sometimes this, this energy comes up when we're getting ready to disconnect from someone, you know, uh, pull back our time and our energy, maybe even, you know, um, uh, move away from the relationship totally, okay? Because depending on how different your truths are at this time, um, uh, possibly you're kind of like, I, I just can't be around that anymore because it's negative. You're understanding how much it is draining you. Yes. So I feel like for some of you, I feel like this may have to do with somebody in your workplace. There is that energy. Um, or it could be, you know, a, a really close family member or perhaps, you know, a partner or a spouse. So... I know when this comes out, I always feel as if there is that tug on our heart because we feel as if we could, if we could convince somebody else <laughs> that we really, I, I feel like this is usually somebody that's really important to us, right? If we could convince them to see things that uh, the way we do, right, then everything would stay fine in the relationship or the situation. Um, and yet at the same time, it's understanding that it is time for you to stay focused on where it is that you, your heart is wanting to go, your soul is aligning to, and understand that this other person or situation, it, it's just expired. It's time to allow it to, to move away. Yes. And for some of you, I, you know, it could be that it is a romantic partner because we have commitment. We have a loving man here. So it could be that it's a romantic partner. If you have moved away from a romantic partner, <laughs> then there is a new beginning happening for you, like a new person coming into your life that takes the place of somebody that you have distanced yourself from. Now, if you haven't distanced yourself from somebody that you're having this energy with, the new person can't come in yet. You have to create that void, that space for somebody new to come in. So um, I think for some of you, um, 
Yeah, this, this is beautiful because, you know, you have really done a lot of transformational work. And think about it. Pluto was in your first house since 2008. And then on Saturday, it, it transited into Aquarius. I did a special a reading on that. And if you didn't get to see that, um, I'll have a link at the end of this reading. But it's kind of like that energy where because of that huge transformation that you've gone through, but having Pluto in your first house, that is your identity, your roles, the way that you see yourself, the way you want other people to see you, right? That has changed you. That has brought you to a new version of yourself, literally, <laughs> right? You are not the same person you were in 2008, but it's also understanding, okay, I have to break free from those people of those situations that want me to play the same roles that I've always played. So a lot of times that's why this can happen in like a relationship or it can happen in family situations where you've played a specific role for a long time and now that you've awakened, you don't want to play that same exact role. You don't want to show up in your role in the same way. You may be using your voice more. You may see that you don't want to spend as much time and energy with people or be over giving in a situation, whether that's at work or in the home. So you're pulling back and taking power over where you put your time and energy instead of just giving it freely to anybody that wants it. You're being a little bit more discerning. And that is where you could possibly have this rift right? Or gap coming in between your energy and the energy of somebody else. So it's understanding you've done this huge transformation. Don't allow yourself to just throw all of that <laughs> a little bit away and to give in to this. Stay focused. Hold your course. You know that you want to continue to grow. You want to continue to, to open your mind and expand your awareness of how you fit in the world. So it's allowing yourself to stay on that course and not to re, uh, re, revert back to the a former version of yourself. Yes. Okay, so yes, you're the Hierophant, you're the Nine of Pentacles, right? I do feel like there's somebody that's wanting to pull you back into a role that you have worked really hard to break free from. So this could be even a romantic partner that you were connected to at one time. Gender doesn't matter here. So it could be somebody that you were committed to previously, um, a past love <laughs> that is showing back up that wants to have you come back into their life, but at the same capacity. They could even be saying, oh yes, I, I changed too. And oh, I noticed you've changed. And yes, that'll be all fine. But then as you're with them, you see that you're just falling back into those same perhaps codependent um, situations or toxic situations, right? That it's just falling back into those old patterns of behavior that you have worked so hard to break because look, you have the nine of pentacles. Single lady card, once again, it's not about gender. It's about, this is all about breaking free and having your independence, your resilience to go onto your own path. You've gained a lot of spiritual wisdom. You are a teacher for other people. Whether you realize it or not, you are inspiring people around you by the, the changes that you have allowed yourself to make. So it's kind of like, okay, <laughs> I feel like, you know, it's a little bit of that energy of showing, somebody showing up, or it could be even, you know, a situation at work where you're, you're kind of like all of a sudden, I think you'll, you'll feel this energy of, oh my goodness, I'm reverting back, right? There's some, some reason that I'm reverting back to a situation that the role that I played in a previous situation, I'm reverting back to that. Even if it's a new romantic partner, you could all of a sudden feel like, oh my goodness, I'm, I'm starting to pick up those same mindsets, <laughs> those same behaviors in this relationship that I had in a previous relationship that I broke free from. It, it's time to recognize that and to understand that doesn't mean that there's anything wrong with the other person especially if it's somebody that you really care about, right? There's nothing wrong. They're not wrong and you're right. And they're not right and you're wrong. You're both right, okay? There is no right here. 
Their truth is their truth and your truth is your truth. You just see things in a totally different way. This would really resonate with you if you could say to yourself, yes, in 2008, I was a totally different person, right? That is the energy here because Pluto went into your first house in 2008 and it just transited into your second house on Saturday. 15 years, okay? So sure, most people change over 15 years, but if you're sitting there going, oh my goodness, I am not the same person at all, then that is the energy of this reading of understanding you've done so much hard work to transform, to be who you are today compared to who you were in 2008. And it doesn't mean that the person you were in 2008 was bad or wrong or anything. I know when I went into this kind of energy, I had a little bit of guilt or shame, right? How could I have been that person in 2008? I see the world totally different than I did in 2008. So it's kind of like, how could I ever be that closed-minded or just only see the world in a narrow way? How could I not have this much more open approach, much more loving view of the world like I do today? But it's not about even shaming yourself, okay? So if this is in a situation with somebody else, you could be feeling this tug of how could I have been that way in 2008 and be the person I am today? Why, why you know, even regrets or resentment about why couldn't I have had this type of energy that I have today back in 2008? and just think about it right but it's part of the journey it's understanding it's all been part of your journey of transforming of taking a deeper look at what you value about yourself and how you want to portray that to the world of breaking those patterns that keep you from being your true authentic self Wow, powerful energy here, Capricorn. So let's take a look at your present energy right now. Yeah, you have deeper insights at hand. I, I do feel we have a King of Pentacles coming in here. So, you know, this is a little bit of your energy, but it's also that energy of feeling as if perhaps back in 2008, you were the mostly concerned about your financial status, like your role in your workplace or your financial status or, you know, head of the household or, you know, even um, the energy of the role that you played in the home. Because the king of pentacles is usually considered like the head of the household, right? Um, somebody that is financially stable, that type of thing. So you could have had in 2008 some perceived truth, right? Some truth, some mindset, some beliefs around what the king of pentacles is. If you wanted to marry a king of pentacles, right? Maybe you were even married to a king of Pen pentacles in 2008 and considered the role uh, that that person played and versus the role that you played as like the queen of pentacles. And once again, the gender doesn't matter, but the energy of, okay, we're together, we're, we're going through life together and the different roles that you played, right? The king of pentacles is typically in tarot, the one that would be out in the workplace, you know, uh, creating financial stability and, and, you know, taking care, protecting the, the family unit. The queen of pentacles is home and hearth. Not that she, she can also be business savvy, but she's also nurturing. She takes care of the home. That's a very traditional way of thinking, right? And you have a hierophant here. It could have been the way that you grew up, right? And you're, you're, you transformed out of that, your understanding that you really and truly want a relationship that is more balanced. It's not about one person does this and the other person does that. It's we work together in order to have this happy family, financial security, everybody on the same page, right? And so I feel like there's something here where there's either a new person coming in that is perhaps reminding you of those traditional roles or somebody from the past where you played more of a traditional role in that relationship is coming back. And there's kind of like looking at it again. I feel like there's some deeper insights that you need to take a look at around the roles that perhaps you play in a family unit, 
really interesting because I think <laughs> you're, you're seeing optimistically that there is something else that you want and you could be even having this conversation. You know, it would be like for me, I have um, three adult children. If I was having a conversation, they may have a more open viewpoint of what a relationship looks like, right? compared to what it was when I got married a hundred years ago, right? It's kind of like, all right, things have changed. Society has changed. We see marriage and relationships in a totally different way. There's even a greater opening up of what works for a couple is okay for them. That is their truth. And now everybody may agree with it, right? And so I feel like that's what you're kind of, you're seeing things in a different way. You may even want to change a relationship that you're in to be not quite so traditional and to have it be more open. So let's take a look at what your obstacle is here. Yeah, regain your focus. There's something here about regaining your focus. Okay, and you have the angels of the four directions coming in. There's something here that's scattering your energy. And I feel like there's something like you, you're, you're concerned that, that something is either going to come to an end or something has come to an end. And it's because you're, you and somebody else is seeing the situation or the way forward differently and understanding that the way that they perceive the situation is true for them. You're not going to be able to change their mind. So if you put time and energy into trying to talk to them about it, it's almost like talking to a brick wall. So it's understanding, okay, do I want to revert back to a role that I used to play or am I going to stay focused and even if the relationship or situation once again it could be a career situation even if it ends is it okay <laughs> because I'm going to stay focused on what it is that I want the growth that I have made and where it is that I'm wanting to go because your advice here is yes you're learning put your creative energy into action it's about you know, I feel like this is a very much like a divine masculine energy feeling like perhaps, you know, you have to work really hard or it's something about financial stability here and a relationship, however that might mean for you. But here's the other thing is that you have the creative energy, learning to be more creative instead of following some traditional mindset that maybe you have had for a very long time. This could even be just you, even if you're single, it could be you and your energy around money and making money and what financial stability means to you. I feel as if you, you've changed, there's this energy. No, I've transformed that. I mean, the way that we look <laughs> at how people work, right? So many people, you know, I'm a retired school teacher, right? And there are so many people that are doing different occupations now, creating their own jobs, right? This is that creative energy. How can you use your creative energy instead of feeling like you have to work at a nine to five job, right? And perhaps just have those benefits or something. And I'm not saying that they're saying you need to change, right? But at the same time, it's kind of like looking at that. What, what is important in that? How has your mindset changed as you have evolved since 2008? Because there's something here. You feel as if you don't have enough of something in order to continue to stay focused. You're losing your focus on what it is that you truly want. This is going into your heart. This is truly going into your heart and asking yourself, are, are you putting, because you have the Ace of Cups here, right? It's kind of like you're put you're putting your your emphasis on on your role in the material world, okay? More so than your enjoyment of life. So, it's taking a look at where because I think you've had this kind of reading where you're giving away your time, your money, your energy to people and situations that are draining you and then you don't have enough to do what you want to do in order to enjoy life. And this could be even children in your life, okay? 
So if you're more like my age and you have adult children, your adult children may be wanting you to play that traditional role of being a walking ATM machine, <laughs> you know? Um, and it's kind of like, okay, well, that's fine, except that how am I ever going to retire? Or how am I ever going to be able to travel to the places that I'd really like to go to? Understanding that the world has changed, right? The world is so different then when, you know, we started out, or like for me, when I started out as a 20 something into the world, right? And perhaps our parents did certain things or we grew up with a mindset that family takes care of family. But I feel like there's a situation here where you're at odds with somebody because you don't see how to either how to spend money, save money, or work for money. There's a difference in opinion. And it's kind of like understanding, okay, yeah, I, I've got to start looking out for me. There's an energy here of taking back your time, your energy, your resources, taking a look at what's important for me, staying focused on what is good for you instead of scattering your your assets, your time, your energy to people or situations that really are just depleting you instead of, they're just, I mean, you have the four of cups here, right? This is kind of like, yes, I'm not getting out of this situation what I really would desire to have. Whether once again, it's, you know, an employer that's not paying you for compensating you for the time and the money and the energy, I mean, the time and the energy you're putting into a job. If it's a relationship, you know, where one of you spends money, <laughs> a lot of money, right? And the other person wants to save a lot of money. So it's kind of like, yeah, we have different viewpoints. And it's, it's understanding or a, a somebody in your family that constantly is wanting money from you, right? And meanwhile, you're trying to save up for your own retirement or a trip that you'd really like to take. It's time to stay focused. What, what is important to you, Capricorn? Keeping your focus on that and learning to say no, <laughs> right? You've done all this transformation, so it's okay. You can say no. You can say no to people in your life that are draining you um, of the resources that you need in order to experience what it is that you'd like to experience in this lifetime. All right, let's pull a soul truth card for you. And Capricorn, I do do personal readings. So if you're interested, the link is in the description box below. I'd really be honored to do a reading for you. All right, let's see. How can I infuse more self-love and compassion into my daily life? Yes, when we're giving away our time, our money, our, our energy to people and situations that only drain us, right? We're not getting anything truly back from that, right? Then you are truly not loving yourself. That's a sign to the universe. Well, yeah, I'll just give it away. There's a difference between being generous, right? <laughs> With our time and our energy, but there's still an energy of knowing that you're getting some good back out of it. This is a situation where somebody constantly is asking you for time, money, or energy, and you're not getting something back. It's different than when you allow yourself to be generous to a charity or be generous to a somebody's situation in your life where you, you feel a lot of empathy, right? That's totally different than this situation. This is kind of like a situation where you're not going to change their mind. You're not. So it's kind of like put your time, your money, your energy into something that will be more fulfilling for you. All right, if your compassion does not include yourself, it is incomplete, and, Buddha, and that's a Buddha quote. Choose one self-care action to do, to do today. Set stronger boundaries, meditate, and listen to your heart. Speak to yourself with compassion. Focus on your strengths. Say no to something that isn't a soul yes, and say yes to something you are afraid of. And my favorite on here is write three things you are grateful for. Yeah, stay in that gratitude. <laughs> stay in that gratitude energy. All right, Capricorn, I'm going to leave it there. I do appreciate so much all of your support. 
Thank you for being part of my journey and allowing me to be part of yours. And if you didn't get a chance to see that Pluto um, video, you can check it out right here. I'll have the link right there so you can check it out. There's also a free um, journal activity that goes with that video that will help you to see how Pluto has truly transformed your life since um, 2008 and how you can set intentions for the next 20 years as it is in Aquarius. All right, much love and light to you. Bye for now.